Hi, Stephanie here with Mahalo.com. We are continuing our conversation on infertility. And, um, you know, infertility is such a terrible struggle, such an emotional struggle for many, many couples. And the key to having that baby is being diagnosed. And so when a woman comes in, what are the steps that she needs to take to diagnose infertility? And Dr. Jane is here to tell us about that. Well, there are three common causes of female-based infertility. One is disturbances in ovulation, a second is blocked tubes, and a third we call the egg factor, which refers to both egg count and egg quality. So for ovulation, women who have regular periods, especially if they notice the signs of ovulation like mid-cycle pain or cervical mucus changes, are probably ovulating. It's those women who don't have regular predictable periods that are probably not ovulating. And there's some common uh, causes for that. Um, thyroid problems, excess production of a hormone called prolactin that actually causes breast milk production, and a condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is associated with uh, excess male hormone in the blood, obesity, excess hair growth, and of course not ovulating. Hmm. Um, so those are, those are very common and fortunately easy to treat. What about the estrogen progesterone balance. I've heard a lot about that. Yeah, you know, that's always been controversial. The reality is that's probably not such a big deal. Um, the egg follicle makes estrogen. After it ovulates, the remnant of the egg follicle makes progesterone. Uh, for many years, people have chased the idea of, well, maybe you don't have enough progesterone. We call that the luteal phase defect. It's controversial, and there's, and there's been no studies to, to validate that it actually exists or that there's a, a valid treatment for it. Hmm. There's a couple other important areas for female infertility, uh, block tubes I mentioned. Um, the way we assess that is by injecting dye into the uterus and fallopian tubes and taking an x-ray picture. If the tubes are open, the dye flows freely into the pelvis. Finally, a really important point is checking the egg factor, how many eggs that woman has left. We have different ways of doing that. One way is testing the hormone FSH on the third day of the period. A high level, for example, over 15, is concerning, meaning less eggs remaining. Another hormone is anti-malarian hormone, AMH. We can test it any time during the month. A number under one is concerning. And finally, ultrasound exams done on the third day of the period during which we can count the resting egg count, resting egg follicles, um, that can be useful also in predicting the egg inventory. What's a good inventory number? We want to see over eight resting follicles. Hmm. Okay, and then quickly, what about this unexplained infertility. A friend of mine had that diagnosis. Yeah, that's a frustrating diagnosis because you have all this tests and the doctor tells you, I don't know. And the reality is there are things beyond what we know that cause infertility, things related to the egg and sperm getting together, the egg telling the, uh, the sperm telling the egg, let's get going here and vice versa. So those are beyond our, our knowledge at this point. So we call it unexplained infertility. All right, Dr. John Jane, thank you so much. Some great tips to diagnosing female infertility. You're welcome. If you'd like more information about any of these important topics, you can click the links here to my left, or you can subscribe to Mahalo Parenting. Thanks for watching. I'm Stephanie Stanton.